Hey guys, so for this lecture, we'll look at the causes of inflation. Now, as we know, in the short run, inflation does not occur, but inflation does indeed occur in the long run. So we have inflation against Y. So the first concept of inflation is when we have demand pull inflation. As we know, the short run aggregate supply is a horizontal line. And the long run aggregate supply, where Y star is the potential output of the economy, is the long run aggregate supply. And also we have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. So let's just make this a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we have downward sloping aggregate demand curve. So how are we going to increase inflation or decrease inflation? There is the first cause of inflation, which is called demand demand pull inflation and so inflation is pulled pulled upward think of like a hand grabbing this short run aggregate supply curve and pulling it upwards which causes inflation and this is caused by demand and so this is caused by a shift to the right of the aggregate demand curve so as we know aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Any increase in the components of C to X would cause aggregate demand to increase. Or a decrease in imports would also lead to an increase in aggregate demand. So as we can see, why uh, why demand or ex excessive demand would cause inflation. So Let's assume that a country produces a hundred dollars worth of goods, and this this hundred dollars worth of goods is split up into say um, product A and product B. We have two consumers, so we have two residents in this country: person A and person B. Person A demands product A, and person B demands product B. And so at this moment, everything is worth $100. So everyone's happy, person A is getting his product, and person B is getting his or her product as well. However, let's assume that person A now is competing for product B now. So person A isn't just satisfied with product A, he wants product B as well. And so because we have reached our long run aggregate supply or our equilibrium point at E1 here, the, the, um, the companies or the firms in this country can't actually increase their production without changing the supply side conditions. And so this means that they can't really increase production to satisfy A. And as we know, firms exist to maximize profits so that they, so in in the situation where they can't actually increase their production in the in the long run, in the short run they're gonna um, increase their production according to demand to, to point Y dash here because they can just overutilize resources or overutilize their labor and capital. But in the long run we know that this can't occur because of certain productive constraints in the economy. So what happens here is where when person A demands more of product B, there's less for person B. And because the business here, or the, the business of supplying product B, wants to maximize their profits, they're going to say, okay, person A, we're going to sell you product B only if you, you buy for a higher price. So initially, let's say this was $50 and this was $50. We're going to say, okay, you can only buy this product for $60. And person B is going to be unhappy because he's being like, okay, the price is $60 now. I'm not willing to pay $60, but therefore my material living standards are going to go down. But I'm, I'm only willing to pay $55 for this product. And so person A competes and says, okay, no, I want this product more. I'm willing to pay $60. And so because this um, business supplying product B wants to maximize their profits, they're going to sell this product 
to person A. And as we can see here, the overall value of this economy is now $60 plus $50. So it's actually increased $10. But as we can see, there has been no change in product. And therefore that results in an increase in inflation because the same products, product A and product B, are now worth more than what, what it was worth before at $110. But the material living standard of both person A and person B combined have not changed at all. And so that's demand poor inflation. When there is excessive aggregate demand for a limited or constricted aggregate supply. And so we've moved from point A in the equilibrium to point B where there is a contraction or sorry, an expansionary gap. And when businesses realize that they, there has been excess demand for their products, they're just going to increase the price of their products so as to maximize their profits. And therefore, that's going to build in a increase or permanent increase in inflation. And so that's one cause of inflation, is this idea of demand poor inflation, where there's excess aggregate demand in the economy relative to the, to the supply available in the economy. So what this means is that we're assuming that the economy always starts in equilibrium. Demand poor inflation would not occur if, say, for example, the economy was underproducing. So if the economy was here and aggregate demand shifts to the right to this, this line here, there would not be an increase in inflation because potential or the actual output originally at y dash dash was actually below the potential output. It is only when the potential output is equal to actual output at y star that an increase in aggregate demand would cause inflation to rise. So that's the first example of how demand poor inflation or an excessive aggregate demand would actually increase inflationary rates in the economy. So now let's look at the second concept which is cost poor inflation. Cost poor inflation. Inflation. So what this is is basically when businesses um, experience an increase in their cost of production. So when costs of production increase. And what this means is because they maximize profits, they would have to increase the price of their goods and services. So let's say, for example, we have product A and product B. Product B before. Product A costs a hundred dollars, product B also costs a hundred dollars initially. So we have a GDP in this country of $200. And let's say it costs the firm $50 to initially produce product A and also $50 to produce product B. And so we have a profit, which is also denoted pi, of $50 for product A and $50 for product B for this firm and they make $100 worth of profits. But now let's assume that the labor costs have increased to $60 or the cost of both these products increase to $60. So it costs now $60 to make, and instead of gaining a $50 profit, we can see that the profit now, after there has been an increase in, say, labor costs, would then be only $40. And because the business here wants to maintain a profit margin of $50 and they can't cut their cost what they're going to do is they're going to increase their price and assuming that the demand for this product will stay relatively the same so instead of charging $100 for this product they're going to increase to 110 and so that means the profit is again $50 and they would gain a total of $100 worth of profit. But now, as you can see, the total 
product or the total prices of the product is two hundred dollars as opposed to two hundred dollars. And now we can see if we add these up, two hundred and twenty divided by two hundred equals one hundred and ten percent. The country here, or country alpha, has now experienced a ten percent rise in inflation. And so this relates to the idea of cost pull inflation. So there are two causes of inflation in an economy. So firstly we have what is called demand pull inflation or demand inflation, which typically occurs in a boom when spending outstrips production. So when spending exceeds production. And this relates to a demand pull inflation. And also we have the second example, which is cost. So that should be demand. That should be cost push. Sorry about that. Cost push. Cost push inflation. So the second concept is cost push inflation, where the the underlying costs of production actually increase and so when costs rise they are passed on by the firms to consumers to protect their or to maintain a profit margin of say fifty dollars in this case and so that's how inflation occurs when there is either an increase an excessive increase in demand or an increase in the pro costs of production of firms and if we aggregate this throughout the economy, then the average prices of goods and services, so the average prices of goods and services, so GPON says, would actually increase.